Stay tuned for Art Zone. Art Zone, Art Zone, Art Zone. Hi, and welcome to the show. I'm Nancy Guppy here at Georgetown Stables, and we've got a real fun lineup for you this week. Take a look. Art takes on pie. It's going to be something that's very fun, very sort of outlandish. Scott Shoemaker takes on Christmas. And I am so excited to tell you about my show. Annie takes on the calendar. Buttcracker takes a final bow. Say one, got to hang if you wanna hang. And 45th Street Brass takes center stage. But when the street lights come on, and someone's gone in the We'll begin with the comedic minds behind the theatrical sensation Ms. Pac-Man, who are now aiming their razor-sharp satirical darts at a new target, the holidays. Welcome to the war on Christmas. First things first, let's get to business. This is not a family show. You're uptight, then you should go. What we're doing is a new holiday show called Scott Shoemaker's War on Christmas. It's going to be something that's very fun, very sort of outlandish and absurd and surreal a little bit. A real spectacle of strangeness. It's supposed to look stupid. Yeah. <laughs> this character is sort of a very hyper-exaggerated, semi-fictional version of myself. Why must I be a casualty in the war on Christmas? Now I want my Cabbage Patch Kid, and I want it now! I pretty much have always been doing one sort of performance or another ever since I was even little. I was always involved in, in some aspect of the performing arts. I think that kind of being funny um, was a way for me to uh, get out of trouble sometimes when I was younger, you know. It's sort of a defense mechanism I think I learned and I was able to channel that into actually performing. What about one like, that, like, <laughs> like really, like, take it over and like... Watch over us on this dark <laughs> When I write, it's yeah. almost always collaboratively. I definitely <laughs> am a creator, you know, a theater creator. But the majority of the stuff that I do is with my partner, Freddie, who is really extremely talented writer. During the rejoice all, rejoice all solstice. Freddie's my partner, you know, actual partner, um, besides a creative partner. And he and I really have sort of complementary skills. And um, that's kind of where our, our, our show ideas come from. You know Dasher and Dancer and Prancer and Vixen. We've been talking about doing a Christmas show for a long time. I happen to really love Christmas. I love it, I love it, I love it, I love it, I love it. <laughs> but I'm not weird about it or anything. No, I'm not weird. You're weird. <laughs> Freddie, on the other hand, absolutely hates it. Yeah, and then Obviously, the title of The War on Christmas is a really loaded so title. Um, and there is an undercurrent of, you know, politics in the show. But at the same time, it's really personal and it's really funny. <laughs> The show absolutely is good-hearted, and we want people to be able to enjoy themselves during the holidays. There is a lot of baggage, and there are a lot of people that are disenfranchised. Love soft as an easy chair. Evergreen by Miss Barbara Streisand. Flawless! I'll say it again. Trees are gay, and they want to be decorated impeccably. Trees are gay! I mean, we're not afraid to shy away 
from the fact that we're queer people and that's kind of our perspective on this. You know, when queer people put on these holiday shows, um, it really does give people that maybe, you know, view this time of year with some negativity or it brings up kind of sad feelings about the fact that either they're not welcome to stay with their families or, you know, spending the holidays with their families is an uncomfortable experience. Um, a lot of queer people, you know, flock to these shows because it is a place where they can make their own tradition. And it's not just really a queer audience. There's a lot of um, straight folks that love to come out and see the weird, too. When you're creating a new work like this, the, there's so many variables that you really don't know how things are gonna go. It's really nice to work with a group of people that I know what to expect from these people. I trust them. They're all like at the top of their games in their field. Also, I wasn't sure since we're trying to hide that pickle, should we? <laughs> their ideas become <laughs> part of the larger whole and it's something that is just invaluable. Uh, there's just lots of insanity, you know, we're, we're going all the way back to some pagan traditions with some really kooky stuff going on there. There's a stripping Christmas tree, there's a love triangle between an elf and Mrs. Claus and Santa Claus. There's all sorts of things they just wouldn't expect. It'd be totally inappropriate things to say. I don't know what I'm doing, but it's all true. We're just here to have some fun, it's Christmas. It's gonna be a wild ride. <laughs> You're not gonna be able to use any of this. <laughs>
shows, mm -hmm. including the Nutcracker. Oh, okay, so not just the Nutcracker. Yeah. Oh, you kind of put them all together. Yeah, so, yeah and there's, there's, mesh. It's yeah. Mesh. there's moments and themes, like you'll kind of loosely start somewhere and travel somewhere, like there's a snow scene. Yeah. Um, this year there's a battle of the Nutcracker and the mouse, but mm -hmm. then you'll jump to mm -hmm. Jesus, happy birthday. Anything else, and is, is there a God character? There's a God character on screen, that would be Wade Madsen. Yeah, the great Wade. Right. And he plays God brilliantly. And then you are playing this year. Yeah, I get to be Baby JC. Oh. Baby JC. Yeah, oh, that's quite the honor. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, yeah. I'm interested in the kind of moves you'll be doing. Um, a lot of pelvic thrusts. A lot of pelvic thrusts. <laughs> oh, uh, well, so so there's some of the things that are happening in the show, some of the um, characters. Uh, Nutcracker, of course. Uh, you know, beautiful music, right? Gorgeous costumes, um, beautiful ballet uh, choreography. What are the hallmarks, would you say, of a butt crack? Well, you're saying the beautiful ballet choreography. There is a ballet piece, <laughs> quote unquote, <laughs> the Frosty Flakes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. And that is the most, you know, a take on that kind of feel. Is there like, are you on point at all? On? No. Oh, yeah, we're on full point shoes. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> See, are you kidding me? Oh, my God, no. The rumor I'm hearing is it really is the, the final one, the final countdown, the Buttcracker 4. Is that true? Is this the last one really? And if so, why? Why would you stop at this point? I know. It's been Everyone loves very it. successful. Yeah. Um, we've had four of them and yeah. they sell out. Um, people don't believe us when we say it's the last one because we kind of have been saying that every time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm saying it's the final countdown, okay. Becca. Becca, what does Becca she doesn't say? doesn't believe. <laughs> also, let me say countdown is, yeah. is not final. I mean, mm -hmm. there's final, but countdown, like there might be more numbers, right? So, we so you're not necessarily saying it's a done deal. Well, I don't know. The, the Buttcracker, Butt Rock Sweets has such a following and such yes. an audience right. that it's something I don't want to see die. Right. So it has to keep going. Plus, you're 26. <laughs> in some fashion. Yeah. And you, yeah. Could, and yeah, you yeah. could pick up the baton here. We have young yeah. people in our show, too. <laughs> <laughs> there are young people. There are young people. There, yeah. Who are yeah. doing, like... Well, I don't want to take the full baton, because I don't want to take the role of four producers. Yeah, but, yeah. right. But you might kind of want to keep it going. <laughs> is, there, is there anything in this final one that is going to be a surprise that we should look for as an audience? We have a lot more video. Mm -hmm. It's high-tech mm -hmm. stuff going on. Ooh, uh, wow. We have... You think it's over 50% yeah, new, new pieces. new pieces. Oh, nice. We have some repeats, mm -hmm. but... Um, like last year, we did a repeat of Hell's Bells that happened the first year. Mm -hmm. There's not any repeats happening like that. Mm -hmm. There's like half the show, it's like new work created now. I'm cool. co-choreographing uh, two pieces, yeah. so. That's fabulous. Yeah. yeah. What's your favorite thing about uh, this show and doing this show? My favorite, it sounds cheesy, but the family feel. Uh -huh. Like, mm -hmm. we all get together and it, it, that's my holiday. Mm -hmm. yeah. And it just feels great. Mm -hmm. uh, there's no bond like that, yeah. you know. Yeah, I, I, I know exactly yeah. what you mean. Yeah, you just it's really, so super hard tight. when it's over. Yeah. The letdown is intense. Mm -hmm. right. <laughs> yeah, exactly. There's a lot of drinks to get lined up on the table. <laughs> right. Definitely. Yeah. Well, I, I, I'm not going to say it's final, but I will. Right. I, we will say the title that it's final. Uh, the Buttcracker for the final countdown runs December 7th through the 16th at Erickson Theater off Broadway. Tickets are seriously flying off the shelf, so you yeah. really want to get on this yeah. right away. Yeah. All right, girls. So what's the thing? Yeah! Oh, My name is Lauren Coe, and I'm the founder of the Instagram account Loco Kitchen. And I am a pie designer. I like to tell people that I grew up in a family of phenomenal eaters. I grew up watching my grandma and mom in the kitchen, and I had never made a pie, so I just kind of thought, I wonder if I could do it, and went for it. August 29th of 2017, I started the Loco Kitchen Instagram account, you know, just posted a photo right away and I got something like 600 likes um, and it's pretty much been one giant snowball effect since then. I had no intention of it becoming a thing, a business, a lifestyle, um, but by the weird wild ways of the internet, um, it pretty much went viral almost immediately. 
I definitely consider myself more of an artist than a baker, um, but it just so happens that my medium is edible. I'm inspired by geometric patterns, textiles, uh, architecture, string art, color, um, pretty much as I'm walking around or out and about in the city, anything and everything that's kind of geometric or has some sort of repetitive precision will catch my eye, anything with texture. Um, and I'm also really inspired by, you know, seasonal produce. And so a lot of times how I choose my flavors and fillings and kind of medium is just based on what's available and what's on sale. All using natural ingredients, natural coloring. found that if I have a very concrete idea in my head, I tend to end up more disappointed because dough and fruit um, don't always cooperate the way you expect. I'm motivated by the art and the design of it, and I like the precision and the way it looks before it goes in the oven. I don't think that the transformation of an art piece kind of takes away from its aesthetic value at any stage of its production. Sometimes I think that kind of ephemeral nature is part of part of the art form. This has been quite the adventure. Um, it still feels very surreal and at times overwhelming, but I'm definitely really grateful for where this journey has taken me and just plan to continue riding the wave for as long as it'll take me. Follow Lauren and her pie adventures on Instagram and at locokitchen.com. on this week's show. It is 45th Street Brass, Peter Daniel on baritone sax. Hello, Hi, sir. How's it going? It's great, great to see you. I'm Good so glad you. you're here. Um, so before we chat, uh, let's meet uh, the band Heavy Hitters All. Definitely. And should we start over here? Yeah. Let's start over here on the far right. On the far side, we've got Jason Cressy on trombone. Hey, Jason. Hello. It's uh, Trevor Parrish on the trumpet. Looking good. David Marriott Jr. on trombone. We know David and this man. Nelson Bell on the sousaphone. 40 pounds. That thing weighs 40 pounds. That's a lot. I know. And back there. Grant Schroff on the drums. We love Mr. Grant. And last but certainly not least. The lovely Miss Annie Yonser on the vocals. Oh, man. So I want to start out by just asking <clears throat> how you got Annie, because her vocal, she's unbelievable. Yeah. She's she's mind-blowingly great. I'm all, I hope I'm not overdoing it. I don't think I am. You're not. No. no, I've been trying to secretly work with Annie for the last four or five years now. Yeah. Um, and how'd you get her? And so we did a, a series of videos with a bunch of different singers, and mm -hmm. we invited her to be one of them. Mm -hmm. um, and then just sort of continued working with her after yeah. that. Just yeah. kept calling her and kept well, writing with her. So. It, what a great mix, yeah. absolutely. So you write all of, you write the original music, you do write original music. How do you do it? Um, so the two we're group? doing today, Annie and I wrote together. Okay. Um, we get together pretty regularly, and we go over, someone will have an idea. Yeah. We'll sit down at the piano, um, we'll sing stuff out, we'll send each other recordings and kind of develop it that way. I'll work more on the band side. She'll work on the lyrics side, the mm -hmm. melody side. Mm -hmm. And then you bring it all in, and then you mm -hmm. kind of make it all happen. Yeah, and it gets arranged as the band plays it a couple of times. We change the form a little bit. They have their input. Yeah. You know? Yeah, it becomes yeah, our own. We get a little input. Yeah, yeah a little yeah, bit. A little bit, a little bit. Why not? Um, so you've done a couple of records, or an EP, Mothership mm -hmm. in 2015. Uh, yes. Okay. Right. Then The Curtain Show, a CD in 2017. Right. So every two years, you seem to be doing something, which means 2019 is coming up. What happens in 2019? Plan is another recording. Okay. Uh, yeah. Hopefully Good. put uh, hopefully put this song on there and uh, do some more writing and uh, yeah. And you're also working on a, a music video. We're working on a video that's right featuring Annie, a, a Beyonce cover. Yeah, which is called Love uh, on Top. Love on Top. Okay. Exactly. When's that coming out? Um, early next year. Okay. Uh, to be determined. All right, to be determined. Yeah, you can check it out at 45thStreetBrass.com and stay posted. Stay posted on everything they're doing. Okay, so you've got to do two songs. Mm -hmm. I know Seeing the Sky is, I think, second, which is yep. phenomenal. And uh, Neighborhoods is number one. It's number one. That's the new song. All right. Yeah. So are we ready to do this band? Yeah. yeah. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, 45th Street Brass. Get 
more about the 45th Street Brass Band, including the release date of their music video cover of Beyonce's Love on Top, go to their website. Hi, I am Faith Young, and I am thrilled to be curating this calendar of events. I am starting out with a family favorite, the Pacific Northwest Ballet's production of The Nutcracker. The magic of the holiday is on display in this classic ballet, the iconic Tchaikovsky score, and the beauty of Ian Falconer's design make this production a Northwest tradition. From the Mouse King to the Sugar Plum Fairy, George Balanchine's The Nutcracker is the most famous ballet stage production in the U.S. Get the family together for this visual treat and head to McCaw Hall now through December 28th. Speaking of magic, the Velveteen Rabbit comes to life in the much-loved classic children's story at the Seattle Children's Theatre, brought to SCT from London's Unicorn Theatre in the UK. The story follows the friendship between a toy and the child who owns him. The contemporary imagining of their adventures together will captivate kids and adults of all ages on stage now through December 30th. Now, let's head over to the Moore Theatre for an Appalachian Christmas. From Mark O'Connor and friends, Mark describes Appalachia as the original melting pot of our country, featuring more diverse styles of American music than just about anywhere. You can hear this multi-Grammy winning musician and composer on Thursday, December 13th. And I am so excited to tell you about my show, Annie at the Fifth Avenue Theater. This exciting new production features beloved songs, including Tomorrow and It's the Hard Knock Life. Come and spend a few hours with Annie, Sandy, Daddy Warbucks, and the dreadful Miss Hampton. 
and watch what happens when a billionaire businessman opens his home and heart to an orphan. This story is sure to bring you and your family the feeling of home this holiday season. We hope to see you there now through December 30th. Thanks, Faith. I'm gonna add one more item to our AZ calendar. It's the 12th annual Very Open House at Equinox Studios in Georgetown. Equinox is a thriving artistic compound. Over 125 artists in four buildings create fantastic work in every genre. The Very Open House is basically a big old party slash holiday gift pop-up shop. Here, have a seat. Every studio will be open and artists will be present, selling their one-of-a-kind objects. Plus, there will be music, poetry, dance, demos, food trucks, and the mighty Schmackamer. Equinox Studios' very open house takes place Saturday, December 8th, starting at 6 p.m. And that does it for us. Thanks to Georgetown Stables and thanks to you for tuning in. We'll be back soon with more great local art. Until then, have a wonderful week.